let's talk warp drive. What's up guys, welcome to the channel, I'm Emmett Short. New Scientist did an article recently on a new warp drive concept, and a day later, Popular Mechanics did too. That's Popular Mechanics' business model. They gotta wait for things to be popular, before it makes sense to put it in the magazine. Fun fact, that's actually why they're called Popular Mechanics and not Original Mechanics. Their stories are blurred out unless you're a subscriber, so I'm giving you all the same stuff for free. I don't ask that you do anything. I don't want you to like, share, comment, subscribe, buy merch, join Patreon, or send nudes. IGN even did a video on it. A group of eggheads at Applied Physics have constructed the first physical model of a warp drive. It's not a physical model, it's a theoretical model of a physical warp drive. How dare you? Everyone stole this story from a video made in November by physicist YouTuber Sabine Hassensaffler. Hasselblad cameras. Yeah. That's correct. I became interested in physics by reading too much science fiction. I already disagree with you. There's no such thing as too much sci-fi. Crack addict right here. Nothing beats sci-fi. Especially when you're high on crack. Teleportation, levitation, wormholes, time travel, warp drives, and all that I thought was super fascinating. But of course, the depressing part of science fiction is that you know it's not real. It is depressing. If warp drive didn't exist in Star Trek, their mission statement would have been slowly going where no one wants to be. I became a physicist to find out which science fiction technologies have a chance to one day become real technologies. I became a comic to meet girls, so we're the same. And just a few weeks ago, a new paper appeared about warp drives that puts the idea on a much more solid basis. In the science fiction literature, a warp drive is a technology that allows you to travel faster than the speed of light or superluminally by warping or deforming space-time. This is not entirely crazy for the following reason. Einstein's theory... I'm calling him Einstein from now on. That's what he called himself, so it'd be rude not to. It is a really common misunderstanding, but Einstein's theories of special and general relativity do not forbid faster than light motion. Right, right, duh. But just because you are using a warp drive does not mean you have to go faster than light. Uh... You can also have slower than light warp drives. I mean, I guess. I know that sounds somewhat disappointing. Yeah. But I think it would be pretty cool to move around by warping space time at any speed. That's almost exactly what my mom said when I was learning to drive. Okay, she goes on to explain Einstein's equation so we can skip ahead because I don't want to bore you with stuff that we all know. She starts talking about this famous warp drive concept called the Alcubierre drive and why it will never work. The explanation that you usually get for how the Alcubierre drive works is that you contract space-time in front of you and expand it behind you, which moves you forward. <laughs> These graphics. Uh, this is a great example of how much lower my production value could be if I was just smarter. His equations say that this warp drive requires large amounts of negative energy. This is bad. It's bad because well, there isn't any such thing as negative energy. Uh, have you been on Facebook? <laughs> okay, I wish I could take credit for that joke, but there was a great comment on her video. Today in the news, warp drives require infinite quantities of negative energy. Tomorrow in the news, SpaceX acquires Facebook. Solid line PG-85. She basically goes on to say that Alcubierre's equations technically work, but they're about as useful as an infinite improbability drive. <laughs> Wow, is this gonna happen every time we, we hit that button? Okay, here's where she finally starts talking about the new paper titled Introducing Physical Warp Drives. These scientists know how to write a clickbait title. This is why IGN got it wrong. It's misleading. It sounds like we've got warp drive. In this paper, Bobrick and Martire describe the geometry of a general warp drive space time. The warp drive geometry is basically a bubble. It has an inside region, which they call the passenger area. In the passenger area, space-time is flat, so there are no gravitational forces. Keep in mind, they're just describing this thing mathematically, not with, like, engineering. The relevant question is then, what does the wall of the passenger area have to be made of? She never 
answers that. The only reason the Akubia drive moves faster than the speed of light is that one simply assumed it does. Suddenly it all makes sense. <laughs> okay, that was sarcasm. German sarcasm, but sarcasm nonetheless. What she's saying is these guys' equations say you can go as fast as you want as long as you keep it under light speed. Really, it says that we still don't know how to accelerate to superluminal speeds. You may find this somewhat of a downer. Yeah, we do. Sabine, though, says there's still hope. All we gotta do is keep our fingers crossed that Einstein is wrong and his equations are wrong, and if so, bam, faster than light travel, maybe, who knows. If you guys wanna hear all the nerdy stuff I skipped over, please go watch Sabine's video linked in description. You guys, I have Patreon supporters because I do a show called Knee of the Curve. I highly recommend you check that out. And if you'd like to help me do more of them, consider joining these awesome patrons as, well, a patron. If you want free Netflix and Spotify and a free 25 bucks for signing up and a crypto debit card that gives you 3% cash back, the link is in the description. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.